was related to exactly related to electrical <coughs> engineering, but I developed computer algorithm and computer program. So in electrical engineering, you need very strong computer programming because if you go to the electrical power stations, uh, once the electricity is generated, it cannot be saved. You have to use it. So there is a generation part. Generation part. And here is the consumption part. So this should be balanced. So to generate, that needs costs. And this cost you generate by from the here revenue, you trade from the record to make consumption from the revenue. So if you generate more, but there is no consumption, you will be in loss. The electrical power. So it is real time. Means if they are generating, you have to consume at the same time. So it is like a restaurant. You go, it is that no one will take the food that is prepared the next earlier day. So you have to serve the fresh one. So it is something like that. So here, so how many generators you have to uh, make? Means how many. Uh, means uh, what will be the use in the morning and what will be the use in the afternoon and what will be the weather tomorrow. For example, if tomorrow will be the cold, it goes the, it means weather, many, many people may use air condition. So in that case, the electricity consumption will be higher. They will, they will use heater or something like that, or fans, electric fans or all these things, if it is hot. So what is the probability of the people using electrical heaters? Or, so you need a lot of data weather data, consumption data, and how many people, household has, how many electrical appliances. So that also comes from the history of the electricity consumption. So there are a lot of data. So the optimum, the optimization between generation and consumption is one of the major issues in electrical engineering. And so there are usually many artificial neural network algorithms, artificial intelligence to correctly predict the load. Means that is one of the load for a cast, you can say. And another is, where you put the transformer? If the population is higher here, it is better, it means the locations of the putting in the transformer. So if you put the transformer in certain location, there should be the, some optimization in the location of the transformer. Otherwise, there will be various losses in the transmission. So you have to make a geographical mapping where to put the transformation, and there you do electrical equations <coughs> so it's basically the electrical engineering has a very serious computer programming problem. <clears throat> so I did my uh, thesis on that. So basically the information engineering professor, uh, uh, I have, was in contact with him and I went doing for the information engineering. I got admitted to information engineering in Mongo's scholarship in Japan, in Osaka University. And my friend became, sorry, the Master's in Information System Engineering. Mm -hmm. So it's from Brihaspati in Electrical Engineering, we get Master's in Information System Engineering. Information System Engineering. So this Information System Engineering, I, what I did was, Basically, I use the same concept that is studied in electrical engineering, that is writing programs, algorithms. Here I did for the electricity power generation, but the application I did was a little bit different. It was more related to mechanical engineering. What, the, what I did was, if you, uh, it's the image processing, how you, means, what is done in mechanical engineering is, uh, for example, you cannot uh, measure, for example, if there is a river flow, for example, in civil engineering also, or mechanical engineering, the flow around the aircraft, for example. I'm not a good, yeah, so for the air flow here, and the airplane, you know, just. So you don't know, then you can measure the flow by putting some flow meter here, but it gives the flow of only one point. 
So for example, also in the planes, if you have noticed, there are some like these kinds of device near the nose. They actually measure the flow of the wind. But more important during design of the aircraft is that what is the flow velocity is every point near the aircraft. So you have to know the velocity at every point. It, it depends upon the point. So the velocity of the water may be different here, it depends here, different. And the same thing, the velocity of air may be different. So how the experiments are done is, actually we split the particle here, red particles, green particles here. Uh, here also the split the particle, and take the image of the particle, and process the image, and just calculate how the particles are moved there, and the particle's velocity is considered as the velocity of the fluid. Because the particles are basically carried out by the fluid flow. So that is how we calculate the flow. So the challenging problem is, the particles are almost similar. So how do you know this particle is moved, has moved this distance or something like that? So this is the interesting problem of motion capture. So using artificial intelligence, we did uh, develop some algorithms for flow measure. And that is, this is actually the field of civil engineering and mechanical engineering. So from I started my career from electrical engineering and went to information engineering department and worked the things that actually the civil engineers and mechanical engineers use. So my, most of the people I knew were from the field of civil engineering and technical engineering. So this way, uh, one of the, so uh, I did it for masters and PhD. And so while I did it for masters and PhD, one of my PhD supervisor was also doing similar kind of thing. And one of my nurse supervisors, examiner, was doing similar kind of thing in artificial intelligence. But he was doing it for biomedical sciences. It was for the uh, biology. It's a, it's a computational biology. So algorithm is same. You just use computer programming and write things, right, uh, and analyze the data. So he told me, if you want to go meet with me in China, so we have a very big project with a company called Monsanto. Monsanto is a very controversial company, by the way, in the agriculture. So they make genetically modified genes. So I use this knowledge after PhD, master's and PhD, I did in information system engineering. And after that, I <coughs> went to the field of bioinformatics. Bioinformatics. The bioinformatics is upon biology and informatics. Biology and informatics is called bioinformatics. So informatics is well, what I always did, because I always did program, and biology was something different. So how you use computation in biology is also interesting. For example, we, if we tell genes, for genes, for biology, it's just maybe something chemical, or something like that. But if you saw the biologist or chemist, that is some chemical. Gene is some like a chemical. But for computer engineering, we just see the genes from sequence. So genes, you probably know if you know the basic of the biology, AT, GC, adenine, thymine, glycine, and cytosine. So these are the four characters. They make the gene. So any gene is the combination of these characters, maybe G, T, A, G. It goes like this. So for computer science, it is just like a sequence. It's like a language. It's like a language process. So interesting is that if you know this genetic code, so probably you have known about the DNA testing. This sequence is similar. Means this sequence is unique to everybody. So on the basis of this sequence, people can find what is the genetic means DNA test. DNA test is similar to that. You can predict what will be the genetic. It will not be exactly similar, but somehow. This C can become T or something like that. That is not a genetic abnormality. That is natural mutation. That happens from father to Sean or like the grandson or something like that. But they are from the genes. You can know it. You will know it if you become a program. So, from computer science, what we see the body as a sequence of this kind of data. So, there are around 23, 20,000 genes in a human body. 
that is you can say 20,000 ores. So from that 20,000 ores, that 20,000 ores can be arranged different way to make a sentence or make a paragraph or a book. So if someone says life is a book, actually life is a book. Book written in this way. So you have to read that. So means how, what type of abnormality, what type of disease, what kind of medicine will be free? That depends upon this kind of information. It's like a means language processing. For bioinformatics, it's something like a natural language processing. It means how you understand another language by computer programming or something like that. So the basic is always the same. It's the basic core is always the informatics. It's good in biology, but it's just the text data from the computer science point of view. So I do this correctly. And also I do <coughs> I do it in the blood bioinformatics. What type of uh, problem there are there in the blood? For example, in the people with the cardiovascular diseases. I just focus on cardiovascular diseases. And I also <coughs> work on developing some point of care devices for the cardiovascular devices. <coughs> surgery. For example, when during bypass surgery, people use a lot of uh, medicines uh, to make blood thin because uh, there is a chance of blood clotting. So we are developing an instrument, an instrument which will make the blood clotting of its means which, which can detect the blood clotting of its organs. So it is basically the combination of electrical engineering and informatics engineering. So my point of view here is why I talk is this my background is because from, if you are from any background, it doesn't matter what your background is if you want to do this. Because uh, this uh, the all is so much uh, integrated. The field there is no specialty because you can create your own specialty. You can be the expert of something that no one ever exists. And you can create your own field. So you can have, for example, for bioinformatics, for uh, cardiovascular bioinformatics. What people need is to know biology about cardiovascular diseases. So probably one of my friends jokingly told me. I can actually write a cardiologist pre prescription by looking at the medical data. I can actually prescribe the medicine. Because I studied so much about biology for the last six years in cardiovascular diseases. Actually, uh, I can do as much as an internal medicine cardiologist can do. If you, I see the data, means I see the actual report, I see the blood test results, all these things, I mean, I can definitely make this medicine or this kind of go to the better to you. Because you have to know that if you want to do that. So, but you have to do informatics also, and you have to understand in depth about the diseases. So to go to that, there will be very few people. For example, if you focus on cardiovascular disease, and even cardiovascular disease, I am more focused on the blood coagulation. So in that field, means that is very complex field, but you have to know in depth about both the fields. You, you have to write programming, you have to write genetic course, you have to write, I mean, you have to modify the genetic course and just see simulation, and you have to know biology. So you can create new things. So I, I saw when I call bio, so I I have one question there. Yeah. What is the difference between this genetic code and computer code? Genetic codes are natural codes. Computer codes are the codes we write. So you, you don't, uh, uh, while, while you do the simulation, then you consider the genetic codes and computer codes together. Yeah, computer, genetic codes means if, for example, these are the chains. Mm. So, these genetic patterns can be changed. So, it, it, what happens is, on the combination of these three letters, there will be a protein, okay? Mm. These three combinations make one protein, these three combinations make another protein, and this protein and protein interact and do some function. Mm. So, if this protein, this is somehow modified by genetic mutation or something, right? And if this protein cannot pump, so this protein cannot interact with this protein and there will be a lack of function in the body. Mm -hmm. So if you can modify this genetic code, so if you can make it somehow T instead of modified pump, then you can treat this protein and the people will be healthy. For mm -hmm. example, you can treat the medicine without just giving some medicine, but just treating the genetic. So for that, you can make a medicine that can 
free existence. Mm. So, what the correct science of engineering, I means correct science of medical science is something like, uh, for example, if you don't see any light here, means if the room is blackout, what you do is just check whether the another room has the light or not. We do that, isn't it? And if there is no light in this building, we just check whether the, there is in the li in the library there is light or not. If there is no light in the library, we make assumption that the, uh, this Isaraja College area may be blackout. And if we see just outside the building, and if there is a light, okay, we, we decide that the problem is here. But if the light is not there, we assume that this neighborhood must have some black or problem. The transformers might have some problem. And or, or, we, or we check in the station area, oh, we can say it's the greater Isaraja area has a black or even we check, oh, there is no light in Tokyo. Oh, it's this great country here. I have no problem with that. So we start from our room and we go to the Tokyo and check. Because we know the network. Because the electricity path are like this, like this, and they have a network. And if there is a problem, then the problem should be another places also. And if the problem somehow, the problem we have is just a part of a bigger problem, or it's our problem. We, we know that because we know the system. But in times of medical science, in the current state of medical science somehow, in my opinion, is if you don't have a light, just go through there, just take the wires from the main line, just put the battery, there will be a light. The problem is solved. The room will be, means bright, means there will be a light. But you permanently detach the system from the main line, now you have to regularly change the battery. So without identifying the root cause of the problem, you just solve temporarily the problem. There is no light. Probably, uh, it's something like that. So you don't find the exact problem, the root problem, the root cause of the problem, but just find the solution. So what we do is uh, do surgery a thing like this thing, but we don't know basic the networks. Still, it is very difficult to find the network. How did? <coughs> Means this digit, for example, is means the these three combinations generate one protein. That protein is very vital to maintain your body function. If that protein, that gene is somehow modified, and this protein is not working, then that, that means the problem. <coughs> but you don't know how this protein is connected to another protein in the body. <coughs> the connection, interconnections of the proteins, interconnections of the genes is not widely studied. They have to be studied locally. For example, if you do experiments. <coughs> they can study locally the meaning of the genes, means the function of the genes. But the total network, how people are interacting with each other, is very difficult, isn't it? It's the same thing for proteins and genes. There are many, number of proteins and number of genes, and how they function is difficult to understand because you cannot visualize it. Okay, so basically, you are saying that genetic code, you change the protein or you change something in the, in the, the pattern. Yeah, sure. yeah, and that you can do by 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 inserting or by doing some kind of the invasion over here. So that is what the genetic modified seeds are. Okay, okay. genetically modified seeds are something like that. For example, so you do the microscopic level. The how you do it? That's that's the question. For <laughs> but we, for we engineer, we computer program, we do it basically by right, we modify the thing. But what happens when you modify this thing? Can become computer, computationally calculated. But finally, virus should test it. Okay. Oh. Anyway, you cannot do just computer programming and make a no, right. You just have to test it biologically because you create hypothesis from here. And so, so Monsanto company, what they does, what they, the fact they give, give to us is how the proteins in, in rice interact with each other. <coughs> For example, uh, during tsunami, there was a lot of uh, sea water injury into the field. That means the same case in the Sri Lanka also the bigger tsunami in the rice field, a lot of water injured. So the soil is permanently, uh, soil has permanently become the salty. But you have to grow the rice. So what are the proteins in the rice that can tolerate the high salinity? That was one of the cases we did with the University of Michigan group. And so there are, we find the salt that can tolerate the proteins. So we can promote those proteins, and we can generate more that type of proteins. Or we can throw out the genes, which are more vulnerable to the salt, or like that. 
So that is how they are genetically modified. So there are some constraints. I mean, some, uh, in some of the places, the rice need many water uh, to grow. But we can make rice that can grow in less amount of water, like that. This is how we did the genetically modified organisms and all the forms. So this is how the biology do. But basically, what we do is the informatics. The common thing is, here is, I'm doing all the way to go. I'm always writing programs and doing some algorithms. So it, it can happen for everybody. For example, if, if you do even do new, new things, what happens is always about the algorithms or programming. For me, and in your case, it can, it can be civil engineering or core or transportation engineering in your field, or geology in your field, or climate in, in this case. It can be the core subject doing the same thing, but you have multiple applications or multiple integrations with your field of studies. So this is how I started about the IoT. Are there simulations available in the world about the variations of genetics and gender problems? Yes, yes, yes. So, are there simulations which are just not practically tested? No yeah, we can make simulations. So, we can make simulations like there is a particular. Uh, what is interesting is that. Uh, in, uh, before you go to the Mendel's or like in the uh, uh, theory of Lamarck's in, in the 1800s, uh, for example, there is a genetic conservation. For example, if people were worried whether the proteins are conserved among the several species. Now I am doing one research, currently I am writing one program for that. I am doing 273 organisms. Using the protein data of 273 organisms, I just want to test, for example, how many human proteins do exist in remaining 273 organisms. So they are, these are the 273 organisms which genetic sequence is not, fully not. So all of the genetic sequence are not, means not, since many organisms is still, you have to read this, you know, it's very expensive uh, experimental procedure. And these 273 are completed actually, around 273 plus, maybe plus minus 20 or something like that. And then you have the data of that. So you, actually now you can see whether the genetic conservation, so the genetic <coughs> that where is put forward by the biologist, said by the algorithm, are true or not. You can just see if the protein. So one of the thing is mutation. So for example, how the mut mutation take place? So for example, this chemical code. This G can be T at any time in the life. It's just changing up the chemical, this chemical reaction can kill this G to T. And this is how the people develop the diseases. Actually, the genetic modifications in the sequence and ultimately the generation of the proteins uh, make people more vulnerable. So how these are preserved? I mean, how, so, for example, yesterday we are talking about what the science will look like after 100 years or 1,000 years. From, if you ask me, uh, after 100 years, uh, maybe 100 or 200 years, what I think is, if you go to the doctor, for example, the doctor will take blood from you, just check over here, read the genetic sequence, see you as a macro, and so it will comp compare with the starter uh, uh, template over there, and you find the problem here is like this. So, and you just give them multiple number of medicine suggestion, just chemical suggestion, and make a formulation of that, and that can somehow modify that part of your genetic issue, then just make the medicine and give the personalized medicine is something like that. So that you, you probably have heard about the personalized medicine, then in the future it looks like that. So you just go and see your network, what is the problem, and the problem is. Next time you go, how you are improved, oh, it is changing, okay, so you may be improved. So, so you need to have a maintain continuous database. Yeah, yeah, so continuous database, yeah. And what do you mean? Me? Means uh, now what people are doing is it is very expensive to read the genetic sequence. So the one thing that people are doing is make cheaper ways to read the sequence. So that all the means there are six billion people and we have different characters. So uh, there is altogether the human has one kind of sequence. There is a representative sequence, but from one human to one human there are some percentages, zero point something something. Change. That change makes so much change about us. 
So that is very important. What is unique about the individual? It is also not, not genetically. What is the unique about that? So why someone is so brilliant and why someone is not so? Since we uh, talk about the inheritance and how this inheritance takes place, it is just even the uh, monkeys are somehow more than 90% similar to us, but still, even the human beings would soon be 100% similar. There are also some changes in the traits, in the phenotype. So that is when if every individual can be sequenced, then you can compare between you. What is the difference between you and just take what is the case? Oh, this guy. I, I have this gene and you don't have this one. I have this protein and you don't have this protein or like this. So you can just talk to it. So if the individual can be mainly. So, and then ultimately from there you can, oh, you are more risky. You have risk of developing this kind of disease or you have risk of developing this kind of disease. So it can be something like that in the future. So it is about my way, it's about biology. But uh, I like working with different fields. So another field that I tend to work is about the IoT. It is Internet of Things. So how I came is to this 